Good morning and welcome to this week's Deadline Trauma. The website's continually working better, so check it out. Today's the day for the healthcare website. Is it mission accomplished or is Obamacare beyond repair? All the breaking details, debate and analysis, plus the political fallout with our powerhouse roundtable. Then, battle of wills. The U.S. faces new tests with China, Afghanistan and Iran. Can America prevail? How will the president manage these multiple crises? An exclusive look at Obama's strategy from the man who was there from the start. Plus, it's America's game. Helmet goes flying. But on this Thanksgiving weekend, new questions about the dangers. Should you let your kids play? And Bono. There's a chance of having the first AIDS-free generation. We can see it. On this 25th World AIDS Day, our exclusive interview. All that right here, this Sunday morning. From ABC News, this week with George Stephanopoulos, starts now. Good morning. Hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. We have a lot to get to this morning, starting with that deadline for Obamacare. Hard to imagine a more shaky launch. We're even learning now that at one point the White House considered scrapping the site and starting all over again. But in a brand new report released this morning, the White House now says the website is meeting its goals, working smoothly for the vast majority of users. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis is tracking the story. She has all the latest right now. Good morning, Rebecca. Hi, George. Good morning. And this is the eight-page report. It says that they have now fixed 400 bugs in the system since the launch. 90%, more than 90% of the time, it's working, it's stable, and they believe that at any given moment in time, 50,000 users can access the system. That would equate to about 800,000 users a day. What's still unclear from this report is what happens if it's a bigger number, if it's 250,000 users at a given moment in time. That's where things stood when the website initially launched and had all of those issues. But we also learned this week, Rebecca, of another delay delay in part of the program. Yes, the delay is on the business side, the small business side. As far as small businesses go, they won't be able to access and get insurance through healthcare.gov for at least another year. And as far as that business mandate goes for small employers employing 50 employees or fewer, they will now have their mandate delayed for a year. But that individual mandate remains in place. If you sign up for healthcare through the exchange by December 23rd, you should be covered by January 1st. White House holding the line on that individual mandate. I also spoke with the White House official yesterday said that the enrollment numbers for November are going to come in much stronger uh, than October. The question is going to be, is it good enough? And that is the question because at the current rate, the rate that we know that this website is running at, if they want to get 7 million people signed up, it will fall short of that number. We're looking at about a million people at the current rate signed up in the amount of time that they were expecting. And that could mean for future future issues as far as the mandate is concerned for people and the cost of their insurance, the pools, if the pools are primarily dominated by older, sicker members, then ultimately those premiums will go up in 2015. Okay, Rebecca Jarvis, thanks very much. Let's bring in two key members of Congress, Republican Tom Cole of Oklahoma, Democrat Keith Ellison, Minnesota. They're here along with Peggy Noonan from the Wall Street Journal, David Plouffe, former top advisor to President Obama, now an analyst with ABC News and Bloomberg. Welcome to you all. And, and Peggy, let me begin with you. We heard those numbers from the, the White House right now. The question is, are people really going to believe it? And are they then going to get engaged with that website now? Yeah, that's a great question. A funny thing in life is that even programs can get reputations. You can get a sense that something isn't working. I think the Obamacare problem is two-tier. One is the real problem with the website that has been fascinating and captivating people for two months. Beyond that, there is the deeper problem of America discovering what is in the program itself. People losing coverage, the doctor situation, you can't keep them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Plus, there's something new, orphan uh, policies in which people go onto the site, think they have registered and find out in January that they haven't quite. So it's so problematic that I have said since October, this thing should just be delayed one year. And, and, and David, picking up on one of the points Peggy said, he, there's so much focus on the problems. You have this political danger that people pocket the benefits and then just focus on what are you know the, the dangers going forward. And there's a lot of benefits. Seniors saving on prescription drugs, preventive care being covered for women in particular, uh, people getting rebates from insurance companies. But there is a huge interest out there. And I think we ought to fast forward a few months here. This has been a rough period, obviously. But by the end of March, most people think you could have six, seven, eight million people 
people registered for health care. So the notion that somehow the Republican message is... Only if there's a rapid increase well, in enrollment. Well, right, but you see the interest out there, George. People want health care. They're going to be able to get health care. So if the website's working, and, and, and to your question, you know, we live in a very social world right now. People will tell their siblings or they'll talk to their brothers or sisters or their friends and say, I went on, it was pretty easy, I got health care, I'm happy with the plan. So w this is going to be something that person to person is going to get fixed or not. And I think what you're beginning to see is the interest is spiking because the interest is out there. People just need an easy experience. How, about, been easy. how about that point, Congressman Cole? I think David is right. People are flooding that website. <laughs> Well, look, you never get a, a second chance to make a first impression, and the first impression here was terrible. Uh, and I think it's going to be an unfolding disaster for the president. There's going to be some winners. There's no question about that. Uh, but there's going to be millions of losers, too. People are going to find out their rates are going up. People that have insurance they like are going to be losing it. That's one of the reasons for the postponement of the business mandate. Uh, you know, the, the individual market is pretty tiny compared to what's yet to come. And I think as that unfolds, uh, this thing is going to be an unmitigated political disaster for the president. And and will Democrats hold the line and continue to support no more delays? I certainly believe so. I mean, the fact is, is that we've had health care nightmares for the last years, decades, and how people were going bankrupt and how they couldn't get covered, how they were being dropped. We're getting to a point where, yes, there are a few problems we're working through now, but we can see the end of that era and into a new time when people will be able to get sick and get care and not worried about being dropped and not worried about going bankrupt. But you identify one of the problems right there. You're right, there have been problems with health care systems as long as we've been in health care yeah. systems, but now the government and the president are going to get blamed for every problem. But, but I'm going to tell you this, I'd rather have our hand than, than, the, than the naysayers. And the reason why is that this, this website is technology. It's going to get better. It's already better today. And it, it's only, we're only going to be working out more kinks as we go forward. And if you look at the history here, you know, <laughs> Republicans and conservatives, they, they said the health, Social Security was socialism, Medicare was socialism, and all this kind of uh, proclamations of doom when now they are mainstream core programs. And, and, and Peggy Noonan, one of the things you do see, even more Republican governors signing up, accepting the program, especially on Medicaid. We just saw Michigan signing up right now on top of Ohio and New Jersey, some big states there. Yes, and lots of people will be making decisions based on money and, and the agreement they can get with the federal government. But let me say something so old-fashioned. I always thought one of the central mistakes here was obsessing on the issue of insurance and not obsessing on the issue of health care and making sure everybody who gets in an accident who has some trouble who doesn't have money can get treated in America. It seems to me we had some programs that could be deepened, broadened, made good, made better. And in insurance is complicated and we are seeing in this whole uh, uh, website thing and in everything that follows, you can't control that market. It's a big, complicated, nutty, messy market. We shouldn't have a government even have gone in there. Peggy Noon and I agree with you. I'm going to tell you right now, I would support Medicare for all. I was ecstatic when we proposed Medicare go down to 55. But, you know, here's the problem, and the, you got to deal with the system that you have. And there was so much uh, fear, resistance, anxiety uh, around moving to what I think would be a real problem, yeah. a real solution, that people uh, just, we ended up with the hybrid. I think you fell for a bunch well, think, of voodoo from I think voodoo from actually business where the Democratic guys. Party is going, which is single-payer national health insurance. As I talk to Democrats in Congress, idea. they mostly say this thing hadn't worked, and they're not moving to the right. They're moving further to the left. I think that's a big mistake for them because Medicare is going bankrupt as it is. Like but every other I think yeah, Democrats would see that and allow it to state become state less important. expensive, le less full of waste and fraud and abuse. Show that regard for these systems and then broaden them. This program was designed to be implemented by the states, and in most of the states that are running their exchanges, it's going quite well. You talked about Medicaid expansion. I think it's, it's just a fact, and it may take till 2017 when this president leaves office. You're going to see almost every state in this country running their own exchanges eventually and expanding Medicaid. But, but, and I think it'll work really well then. That's 2017. It is also a fact right now, David Bluff, that the public seems to have lost confidence in President Obama, both his confidence and, and for the first time in, in whether he's honest and trustworthy. How does the president turn that around right now? If you were back in the White House right now, you'd be planning that State of the Union coming around in January. What are the keys to rebuilding 
his profile and his agenda. Right. Well, this has been a tough patch, and it's not just health care. You know, the shutdown affected everybody, confidence in government. But I think let's, let's fast forward to the State of the Union in the months after that. Health care working better, a lot of people signing up, economy continuing to strengthen, hopefully no Washington shutdowns. I think the president's numbers will recover. I think people's confidence will recover. And then we need to put, push Congress to do immigration to do smart things to help the economy. That, the American people are sitting at home and saying, we're talking about all these issues except what's most important to me, which is my job and which is my estate, my, my, uh, my income. And that's what Washington needs to focus on. The, the American people are screaming out, focus on us, what's important to us. David, I think the president has a problem. This is what it is, it's simple. He said, if you like your health insurance policy, you can keep it, period. If you like your doctor, you can keep him, period. If you like the hospital you go to, you keep it, period. That has all turned out in the past two months as Americans have interfaced with this program to be untrue. And the American people look at the president and they think, he's no dummy, he's a really smart guy. And because he's a smart guy, they think, well, that means he deliberately misled us to get his program through. People don't like that. That is another reputation changer, and I think that's problematic for the president going forward in the next well, few months and years. I think he spoke directly to this, and I think people accepted what he had to say. I think people trust this president. I think there's been numbers all over the place, but I'm confident in a few months from now, those trust numbers are going to come up. I think his approval number will come up. And I think more than anything else, as we begin to focus, hopefully, on what really matters to people, and that's what the president, I think, needs to do, and he let tried to do it this to, week out Let me bring that to Congressman Cole, especially the issue of immigration. You saw the president go out to uh, visit some protesters on the mall this week saying he hasn't given up on Speaker Boehner. He, 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 <laughs> well, he, Speaker he, Boehner hasn't given up on him, but that's just to say they're awfully disappointed in one another. But, but on the issues particularly of immigration, any hope for that this year? Not until we get the budget done. Uh, literally, I think the most important thing right now is to make sure we don't have a government shutdown, to make sure that we you think deal it's possible with the again? debt ceiling. Uh, I don't think it's likely, but look, we stumbled into one before that I didn't think was wise and didn't think should occur. So, uh, you know, the line I usually use is, you know, around here we can't walk and chew gum. Let's just chew gum for a little while. And right now, chewing gum is getting a budget deal and making sure that we don't uh, default when the debt ceiling comes. You, you know, I just want to say that I think that everything that the president said and did was in pursuit of trying to get Americans, all Americans, health care. So I think even though he may have said, if you like your decent insurance, your insurance, it works. Uh, then you can keep it. I think that people really get that. And when, they, and when he, he, he owned it, he said, look, man, I, uh, if you misunderstood what I was trying to say, I'm sorry about that. I think that shows integrity. He didn't do anything to self-promote. He did he, what he was doing. He was trying to do to help uh, Americans all over this country for decades. I'm going to disagree and a little bit with, good intentions with, count. with Keith here. Look, we, we knew back in 2009, 2010 this was going to happen. The Congressional Budget Office right. put out studies about it. We made the points, and we now know the administration had plenty of documents Which warning that millions of people were going to, uh, you know, we're going to lose health care here. So I think this does get to credibility as well as competence. And also well, these plans, actually, many of these high-deductible, high-exclusion plans, plans, you know, they don't, they, they were not quality plans in many cases, you know, and the fact is they were, they were for a small, they, they might work for somebody who had a lot of money saved up, but for other folks, they just didn't. There's a reason those premiums were low. I want you all to stand by. We're going to come back for more roundtable later.